Rust is supposed to be memory safe, but what if I told you some computer wizard just figured out a single line of code that breaks the Rust compiler and shatters that promise? By using this single line of code, he was able to cause undefined behavior all within safe Rust. Now, you're probably wondering, how is this even possible? Is the Rust compiler broken somehow? Well, actually, yes, it is, and it has been for a long time. In fact, there's a GitHub issue tracking this problem that has been left unresolved for almost 10 years. And this defect is surprisingly easy to understand if we just unpack this code a bit. First, we'll extract out the vector into a variable. Then we'll define the make static function. For now, we'll simply take a reference as input and return the same reference. In this case, we're passing in a reference to the vector, getting back that reference, and then printing it out. Now, what happens if we explicitly drop the vector right before calling print line? The Rust compiler will rightfully throw an error. We cannot use a reference once the underlying value has been dropped, because the reference is now pointing to invalid memory. But what if we were able to trick the compiler? First, we need to realize that the make static function signature is actually syntactic sugar for the following code. The reference passed to the function and the reference returned from the function are both given the generic lifetime tick A. If you're not familiar with generic Rust lifetimes, this basically just means that both references have the same lifetime, or in other words, are valid for the same amount of time. In this example, we pass in a reference to VEC, which is valid until VEC is dropped. So this means the reference returned from the make static function is also valid until VEC is dropped. That's why the compiler throws an error when we try to print out evil on the next line. But what if we modify the make static function so that it returns a reference with a static lifetime? A static lifetime means that the reference is valid for the entire duration of the program. Now you can see why we call this function make static. Well, if this worked, we would be able to compile code with a critical memory safety vulnerability. That's because if we were able to write this function, the Rust compiler would allow us to print out evil. Evil would have a static lifetime and be considered valid for the entire duration of the program, even though the underlying value has been dropped. In this scenario, printing out evil would cause undefined behavior, which is the kind of vulnerability Rust is supposed to prevent. Fortunately, in reality, the Rust compiler is smart enough to reject this code. It throws another error, this time yelling that we cannot return a reference with a generic lifetime of tick A, because that lifetime may be shorter than a static lifetime. Makes sense. Now, this is where the defect comes in. A level 47 Rust wizard was able to figure out how to get around this compile time error by adding this helper function and changing the body of the make static function. This code is using some very complicated Rust features and the GitHub issue provides all the nuanced details. But basically, by using a combination of variants and implied bounds for nested references, this code tricks the Rust compiler, which should guarantee memory safety, into accepting this memory unsafe code and successfully compiling it. With these modifications, we are able to print out evil and cause undefined behavior, which leads to data corruption, security vulnerabilities, and crashes. In fact, here's what happens when I try to run this code. Jokes aside, this is a pretty serious hole in Rust's type system, so why has it been left unresolved for so long? First, this bug is hard to fix because it involves subtle aspects of Rust's type system. And second, this bug poses more of a theoretical risk rather than something that frequently causes vulnerabilities in everyday Rust code bases. That said, some developers are not too happy with this issue still being unresolved. And I understand the concern because this bug can be exploited. For example, a dependency written entirely in safe Rust could still secretly violate memory safety due to this flaw, exposing your code base to supply chain attacks and vulnerabilities. The good news is you can be part of the solution. Rust is an open source project and anyone can contribute. But first, you need to get really good at the language to fix an issue like this. To do that, make sure to get your free four-day Rust training at letsgetrusty.com slash bootcamp. And then click here to watch this video next to get an overview of all the features that make Rust a fantastic language.